Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. Welcome back here. It is the Earth Master on this end of the weekend. It is Sunday, February 11th, 2024. It's about uh, 9.20 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity still shows some movement down here into the uh, Southern California area. I kind of covered this last night. Looks like there hasn't been too much earthquake activity since last night, at least according here to the USGS, but we do have one coming in within the last hour there in the uh, Brawley area of Southern California. So what's going on here? Um, a lot of folks watching the uh, Super Bowl out here today. Not for sure which team anyone's rooting for anymore, but uh, hey, it is what it is in that respect. Uh, Hawaii activity here. Now, I want to jump into this here real quick and cover the activity across the Hawaii region. Um, last 12 hours here of uh, activity, earthquake activity. Uh, looks like they've kind of updated this a little bit since last night. I know we were on a pause. We lost the data from the, uh, the HVO in terms of seismic data. Well, it looks like it went offline once again because I know it is not 0400 uh, UTC time. Uh, technically, the time right now is... Uh, 1720 UTC time so it went offline maybe it's been offline that entire time since last night so no new update to report here in terms of monitoring the data but uh, at least looking at some of this activity I see magma movement here on the graph I'm kind of been uh, itching to see what's going on here with the graphs and the data but uh, again it's offline hopefully they'll get to it on Monday uh, the UWE station looks like that is uh, offline as well since yesterday. But you can see inflation going up here across at least one of the um, tilt meters there across the summit region. Again, data is just lacking in an important time to monitor the activity there across Hawaii. Hopefully someone will get to it tomorrow morning and keep it up. It just seems to be going down time and time again far as reported earthquake activity out here still seeing some movement around the Pahala area again this is very typical movement that we see uh, in terms of the uh, earthquake activity down below the region here of uh, the Pahala area not a whole lot going on here at least according to the USGS on that map uh, I do have on the live seismograph station here the uh, hot caves Hawaii station which is right here so we can monitor at least the live data coming in. Also Yellowstone, uh, looks like they're having a little bit of activity there at Yellowstone. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going on up there. Uh, nothing being reported, of course, but far as the uh, recorded graphs go, recorded seismographs, we'll see if these are up to date. Um, let's see what we got here. Maple Creek area. This is um, UTC times 1700, right? Yes, it is. So we are current on that. As far as earthquake activity being recorded overnight, it uh, looks like a handful of smaller earthquakes here uh, in the region of Maple Creek. Not a whole lot of swarming uh, going on, though. No magma movement that I can see here across the super volcano for now. Um, backing out here, Washington. Seen a little bit of activity last night and uh, yesterday around Mount Rainier. One earthquake coming in right now outside of the Seattle area. Uh, kind of over here in the Cascade Mountains there, 1.8. Nothing big going on. Uh, here's this little oddball earthquake from last night. Haven't really seen anything uh, else in this region, but still kind of watching it. West Coast still seems uh, somewhat uh, active, at least this morning. Uh, getting a handful of earthquakes here in the last hour. And keep an eye on the Southern California region, specifically around the Barali Seismic Zone, as that is an extensional fault system here of the plate boundary the San Andreas Fault where we uh, don't want to see a whole lot of activity around could be looking at uh, maybe maybe some triggering earthquakes if uh, we get them close enough and big enough all right last 24 hours here largest magnitude looks to be a 5.0 here across the Kermadec Islands New Zealand area 54 kilometers deep uh, far as New Zealand specifically down there uh, let's see what we got this is the last 24 hours I believe uh, really not seeing a whole lot down there across New Zealand. In fact, nothing showing up. Um, let me double check that though and see what we got across the area. A couple different sites you can use. I'm sure there's more than this too, but New Zealand Quakes um, is a, a decent site to check. nzquakes.com 
is um, got a lot of stuff on here in terms of New Zealand activity, also uh, drums and live cams across the world. As uh, far as the largest activity, it looks to be the, uh, uh, looks like Geonet's reporting this as a 5.1 along the Kermadec Trench. The most recent earthquake, though, around New Zealand shows this 2.3 here uh, within the last 24 hours. Not a big quake, unnoticeable down there across the South Island area. I'll uh, take a look at the earthquake drums here real quick for New Zealand. And uh, really not seeing any major swarming going on there. All the seismograph stations look pretty quiet here for, uh, for the day so far. In fact, this whole area looks very quiet across Solomon Island, Samoa area, Tonga. Uh, one little earthquake up here across the Aleutian Trench right now, 2.3. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Really not a whole lot of movement here today. And uh, that goes for about the area of uh, South, or the, uh, South America region as well. A lot of this quake activity from yesterday. Uh, one thing I have noticed, there's some deeper activity into the Kuro Kamachaka, into the Sea of Osk region, underneath this area actually. Uh, seen a 4.1 just after midnight, 500 kilometers deep. Keep an eye on this area. We've seen all sorts of movement around the Pacific Plate, large earthquakes and small ones and deep ones. This is the area here I feel is primed for some mega quake potential. It's a large subduction zone there and uh, the accumulated slip rate is quite high up here and it's been a while since we've seen any major earthquake activity within that area. So keep an eye on the, sea, the uh, Kuro Kamachaka region. Uh, mostly older movement here from yesterday across this area, the Middle East and Mediterranean region. Uh, the latest quake shows a 3.3 into the Turkey area. USGS showing a, an occasional three-pointer on the map. That may be a sign that they're going to show some smaller quakes from now on across the globe. That would be nice if they included the option to see the smaller quakes. Because they're pretty important, right? At least give us the option. I know it probably takes a little bit of a... Uh, involving in the apps and whatnot, as uh, far as the IT work goes. Uh, Iceland here, got a 3.1 on the globe, so let's head up north and see what's going on here for the Iceland activity on this fine Sunday. Looks like that's going to be this earthquake way up north here, off, off the, uh, uh, yeah, looks like it's just off the coast there, northern I Iceland area. Rift zones, uh, for the most part, just showing smaller earthquake activity here across the Grindavik area noticing a little bit of earthquake movement away from the uh, Fisher area that's opened up here over the last couple months notice this little swarm here a little separate swarm uh, let's see if we got any new information there from the Iceland Met office in regards to this activity that is just some small writing I had to reset the computer last or uh, this morning looks like the stream went down last night about three o'clock in the morning uh, which it seems to always pick that time frame but I went ahead and did a couple updates here on this end just to keep everything fresh in terms of the drivers and of course the latest virus uh, definitions there far as um, eruptive activity last update was put out a couple days ago when the uh, activity ceased there across the Green Devic area northeast of Green Devic that is uh, so we're just kind of watching that, seeing how this plays out in the weeks ahead. Uh, probably going to see some further swelling going on there, uh, inflation, and maybe a return of some fissure activity as we head towards the 30-day uh, mark. But uh, last couple runs here, looks like we've had a little bit of decline in the activity. Notice this last run here dropping off from the uh, uh, inflation. Of course, this is where we've seen the uh, depletion of the magma below which created uh, an, a deflation event uh, but we started to go back up a little bit now it looks like we're going back down so I will watch this and see if this repeats its cycle that it's been doing uh, in terms of um, the 30-day interval there between eruptions all right uh, space weather activity quite uh, active here over the last couple days see what we got we're still kind of uh ringing the bell so to speak with some uh, charged protons there in the ionosphere this is a continued proton event up to this time frame right now which is valid 
mostly down around the southern polar region, a little bit there in the northern area as well, and of course around the sunlit side of the Earth where the sun is most uh, centered there. Looks like South America region. Um, but we should be calming down here, hopefully, because that's quite a bit of proton energy uh, hitting the uh, planet currently. Far as the aurora forecast goes, it looks like we're having a, a little bit of maybe excitement here coming around the 13th where we're uh, forecasting a G2 class storm. Auroras could be possible down to the uh, mid latitudes with that type of activity. We'll have to watch that though. Uh, overnight we did see a little bit of heightened KP index here around the 4 range which, which uh, stirred up a little bit of the auroras up here across the higher latitudes. Right now it's just very minimal conditions but it looks as though here um, that we could be looking at some elevated conditions as we head um, into the uh, 13th time period. Let me open up the uh, official site here, the Space Weather Prediction Center, NOAA.gov site. These are the folks monitoring the um, activity. What's going on here? Are these guys online? Are they offline? It's not me. Looks like uh, these guys may be having a little issue there. Seems like a lot of the uh, government agency is, uh, are having some issues. USGS, Space Weather Prediction Center. So uh, we'll have to check on that in a little bit later. But either way, it looks like maybe a G2 class storm here uh, in a couple days. We'll cover that a little bit more later in tonight's update. As uh, far as flaring activity goes, still um, somewhat elevated. 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 60. X flare around 15% chance or so. And of course, the proton event is continuing. That should die down here soon pending we don't get any further flaring going on. Uh, overnight, uh, just some sea flare popping there, as you can see on the chart. A look at the magnetogram image shows this massive sunspot region here, um, kind of facing away from the Earth now. Uh, it is still rather large, but uh, it's starting to lose its intensity here. It did pop off an M flare yesterday, but since then only crackling with some sea flares. Uh, I don't think we're going to see anything larger uh, than sea flare activity, at least looking through this, uh, from this magnetogram image. Looks like that's starting to decay, unfortunately. Uh, we do have a couple other sunspots um, that are trailing this issue, or trailing the sunspot, so to speak. And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on this one, maybe. This one looks uh, somewhat complex. Looks like it is growing in complexity. Uh, that's going to be sunspot number... Uh, 3583 here. This is the older image from last night. This here is the most recent image. We'll continue to watch these sunspots and see uh, how things play out. But uh, again, not really expecting much in the way of strong flares for now. Uh, Storm Prediction Center in terms of weather. Here's the current day one convective outlook showing an added enhanced area here across portions of the south. Uh, that uh, is kind of a big deal. Uh, we have a 10% hatched area for large tornado activity here across the region of Jackson, Mississippi, uh, Meridian, Clinton area. All these regions here in the dashed area. Heads up today if you're out there uh, having your Super Bowl party or just uh, enjoying maybe some company here on the weekend. Um, keep a weather radio handy when you're watching the game today uh, because it looks like there's a decent chance of seeing some large tornadoes in this area. Uh, the dashed area is a 10% or greater probability of seeing the EF2 to EF5 tornado activity, uh, which is some large tornadoes within about 25 miles of a point. Uh, but technically, if you're out here in any of this area within the green, uh, the 5% or the 10%, you got to be weather aware today. Uh, there's also potential of some wind damage and a uh, pretty decent chance of some large hail activity as well. Looking at uh, potentially some significant severe hail out here in the dashed area with 2 inch diameter hail or larger within about 25 miles of a point. So just a heads up, uh, looks like quite the active day out there in those regions. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a good day. And uh, we'll keep an eye on things. The live stream, of course, is up and running. And far as the seismograph stations go here, uh, we do have 
a number of them uh, currently monitoring the live network here so this is all live data coming in from the uh, seismograph stations there at their respected locations barrett california and southern california around san diego just outside of san diego uh, philippine stations here petrolia california is in northern california just outside eureka mount st helens of course they're in washington station there in chile uh, kodiak island alaska hot caves hawaii that's in between pahala and the uh, kilauea volcano and uh, lake yellowstone here in wyoming so we'll continue to monitor the activity and uh, of course report back and update on anything that uh, takes place out here throughout the day uh, make sure while you're here to subscribe and click that notification bell so you can get notified when we provide these live updates and important uh, nature and earth related events have a good one folks we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening